Hello, everyone. In today's session, we are going to cover civics, chapter number two, diversity and discrimination. In civics, chapter number one, we have already understood what do we mean by the term diversity. So in this chapter, we will be knowing about differences and prejudice, stereotypes, inequality and discrimination, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and striving for equality, the Indian constitution. So students, in the previous chapter, we understood what do we mean by the term diversity. The term diversity comes from the word diverse, which means variety. And India is the biggest example of unity and diversity for the entire world. There are numerous languages, religions, customs, traditions, which are existing in India. And so respecting each other's decisions, respecting each other's tradition, we all live together as one country. So this is how we respect our diversity. But students, don't you think that diversity comes from the word discrimination? Don't you think diversity and discrimination are the two faces of one coin? Now you will ask, ma'am, how? So students, sometimes what happens that intentionally or unintentionally, we might hurt the sentiments, the culture, the tradition of the other person. When we hurt someone intentionally or unintentionally, then there comes the word discrimination. Let us understand how diversity and discrimination are interrelated to each other in this following chapter. There are many things that make us what we need, what we are, how we live, the language we speak, what we eat, what we wear, the games we play, and the things we celebrate. All of these are influenced both by the geography and history of a place where we live. There are eight major religions in the world. Every single of them is practiced in India. We have more than 1600 languages that are people's mother tongue and there are more than 100 dance forms. Yes, this diversity, it, yet this diversity is not always celebrated. We feel safe and secure with the people who look talk, dress, and think like us. So students, from the following paragraph, we understand that there are a lot of many things which make us what we are today, the kind of people we meet, the kind of life we live, the language we speak, the kind of clothes we wear, the games we play, etc. All of these things describe what we are as a person, as a human. Moreover, in the world, there are eight major religions which are practiced and it may surprise you that every single religion is present and practiced in India. So there are more than 1600 languages as people's mother tongue over 100 forms of dance. Yet this diversity is not always celebrated. We always feel safe and secure around the people who look, talk and dress like us. Sometimes when we meet people who are different from us, we may find them strange and unfamiliar at times. We may not understand or know the reason why they are different from us. People also from certain attitudes and opinions about others who are not like them. So students, you will must have noticed and observed that we all are not happy around the people which are seen like us. We are happy with them. So we feel secure and safe and we do friendship with that kind of people whom we actually want. But do you realize that at some point of time, we often met people who are different from us? How do we react with them? We react strange and familiar. We react in a way that they are so much different from us. People also from certain attitudes and opinions about others who are not like them for example, you are there at your home now. Yes, so now when you come to school, you will be able, you have a student, suppose you have a student who is not from North India, but from any other part of the India, maybe from the South India, East India, or maybe from the West India, but not from the North India. Then how will you react students? You will react strange because the culture, 
the tradition, the language and the extent of the speaking of that child may not be familiar with you. So how will you react? You will automatically start creating opinions about that child. You will automatically start having attitudes toward that child. This kind of attitude and opinion creates discrimination among the society. Any people who whom you belong believe is strange for you, is not familiar, you start forming opinions about them. Such opinions led to discrimination in the society. When our opinions about certain people are always negative, seeing them as lazy, cunning, stinky, as some of the statements above, then these become prejudice that we carry about them. Here, students, we need to understand that there are two kinds of discrimination which people often face. First is the prejudice and the second is the stereotyping. We are going to look upon these two words one by one. First, let us study what do you mean by the term prejudice. The word prejudice means to judge other person negatively or to see them as inferior. When we think that only part one particular way is the best and the right way to choose the thing, we often end up not respecting others who may prefer to do things differently. For example, if we think English is the best language and the other language are not important, we are judging these other languages as negatively. As a result, we might not respect people who speak languages other than English. So students, what do you mean by the word prejudice? The word prejudice means to judge any other person negatively or treat the person or any other thing as inferior to you, which means not treating them equally or not providing them equal right as you have, clear? So they have given us one example that there is a one child in your class who doesn't know how to speak English. So tell me one thing. How many of you would like to have friendship with that child? Very few students will say yes. Most of the students, they will prefer only talking or keeping friendship with those students who are very fluent in speaking the English. Yes or no? Yes. So as a result, you might not respect that child's language, which is other than English. So why do you do this? You do this because you have already judged that English language is far superior than other language. This means that you are practicing prejudice. Let us move ahead. We can be prejudiced about many things. People's religious beliefs, the skin of the color, the region they come from, the accent they speak in, the clothes they wear, etc. Often, our prejudice about others are so strong that we don't want to do friendship with them. At times, we not even act in the ways that hurt them. So next is the stereotypes. We have the stereotypes. Now students over here, we need to understand that the difference between the prejudice and the stereotypes. These two words may look similar, but their meaning is totally different. Let us understand what do we mean by the word stereotype? When we fix people into one image, we create stereotype. I hope you all understood that when we fix people into one image, we create the stereotype. For example, let us take an example of girls and the boys. Now, if I tell you that among the boys and the girls, who are the most strongest? Everyone, you will say that, the boys and the boys. Yes or no? Okay, so now next question is, among the boys and the girls, whom do you think are the most emotional? Now you will say that the girls, girls. But may I ask you, why do you think so? That boys are stronger and girls are more emotional. Have you not seen any boy crying? Don't you think that boys are also emotional? Or have you not seen girls participating in the various activities, sports activities and giving the tough competition to the boys? So don't you think that even the girls and boys, they are equally stronger? But we think so because we have already created one type of image in our mind. Hence, this is called stereotyping. This is creating, we are creating the stereotyping. 
when we fix people into one image we create the stereotype when we when the people say that those who belong to a particular country religion sex race or economic background they are stingy lazy criminal or dumb they are using the stereotype they are stingy and generous people everywhere in every country in every religion in every group whether rich or poor male or female and just because some people are like that this is not fair to think that everyone will be the same now students over here this picture you must have been wondering why has ma'am put this picture in the stereotype student this will describe you the stereotyping in the world had about india this world used to think that india is a land of snake charmers there are the only snake charmers which known for the all over india they didn't believe that india's capability to progress or achieve success in any other field but now you can see that the rocket in india go up high this image is a clear example of what the world has thought about india on the other hand the world has thought that india is just a land of snake charmers but what did india prove india proved to be a very strong and a prosperous country today india has the world third largest army indians space researcher organization is one of the most successful research organization in the entire world many of the suggestions or the advices are followed by the world wide let us take the example of our prime minister only the mr narendra modi he has made india's image so great in the eyes of the world that every person in the world is appreciating for the kind of work he has done for the country for our india he is the worldwide leader today yes or no yes so let us move ahead about the stereotype stereotypes stop us from looking at each person as a unique individual with his or her own special quality and skills that are different from others they fit large number of people into one pattern or type stereotype affect us all of us as they prevent us from doing certain things that we might otherwise be good at so student what does stereotype do stereotype prevent us from looking the good things about any individual let us move ahead inequality and discrimination discrimination happens when people act on their prejudice or stereotype if you do something to put other people down if you stop them from taking part in certain activities and taking up jobs or stop them from living in a certain neighborhoods prevent them from taking water from the same well or hand pump or not allow them to drink in a tea in a same cups or glasses as others so you are discriminating against them so students inequality and discrimination happen in every household let me tell you how so we all have maids coming that coming inside our homes to do the utensils to clean our house etc etc so what when we have to give water to them so which glass do you prefer have you kept a separate glass for them or do you provide them water in the same glass as you drink i know i know most of you will say that that you have kept a separate glass students let me tell you this clearly means that you are discriminating against them have you forgotten that we all are the humans first have you forgotten that everyone has a right to equality right to respect and dignity yes or no yes so there are many things in the world in our country which we are practicing and intentionally or unintentionally we are discriminating a lot of people now the discrimination take place because of the several reason for example religion this is an aspect of diversity however this diversity can also be a source of discrimination groups of people who may seek a certain language follow a particular religion live in the specific region etc may be discriminated against as a custom or practice may be as seen as inferior so student it usually happens that we always put our religion our custom as superior 
and treat all the religion as inferior. So in this way, we are practicing discrimination. We have to understand that India is a diverse country and its first and the foremost fundamental right is right to equality. So it clearly means that we all the individuals, all human beings living on the world, living on this land of India have to be treated equally by each other in the eyes of law, in the eyes of the government. Clearly, so we do not have the right to treat any other custom, any other tradition, any other religion as inferior. Now, let us move to the next difference, which is based on the economic background. People who are poor do not have the resource or the money to meet their basic needs of food, clothing and shelter. They experience discrimination in the offices, hospitals, schools, where they are treated badly because they are poor. So student, it happens that we tend to treat the poor people badly because they don't have money or the resources. We often treat them, we often treat with the rich, with all the dignity and respect and forgotten that if even the poor they are also human beings and we have the right and they also have the right to the liver dignified life so now let us study about our constitution the father of our constitution dr b r ambedkar dr bhimrao ambedkar 1891 to 1956 is considered as the father of indian constitution and is also the best and is also the best known leader of Dalits. Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar fought for the rights of the Dalit community. He was born into the Meher caste in Maharashtra, which was considered untouchable. So students, Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar was considered, was belonged to the Dalit community of Maharashtra from the Meher caste and this caste were belonged to the Dalit community. The Mehers were poor, owned no land and the children born to them had to do the work which their parents did. They lived in a space outside the main village and were not even allowed into the village. So the students, what kind of discrimination was practiced in Maharashtra within the Meher culture was that these Meher people who was considered Dalit of Maharashtra. They were very poor. They don't even have any land. Moreover, the children of Meher community have been forced to do only the work which their parents do. Moreover, they did not have the space inside the village, which means that they were forced to live outside the village. So Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar was the first person from his caste who completed his college education and went to England to become a lawyer. He encouraged Dalit to send their children to school and the college. He also urged Dalit to take on different kinds of government jobs in order to move out of the caste system. He led many efforts of Dalit to gain entry into the temples. Later in his life, he converted to Buddhism in his search of a religion that treated all the members equally. Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar believed that Dalit must fight the caste system and work towards a society based on respect, not just for a few, but for all persons. So students, what do we understand here? We understand that Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar was the first person from his caste who completed not his school education, but also his college education. And he went to England also to become a lawyer and he encouraged all the students from the Dalit community to complete their education. Also, he did many efforts for Dalit to gain entry into the temples. Later in his life, he converted his religion to Buddhism because he believed that Buddhism was one religion which treated all members equally. Next, striving for equality. The struggle for freedom from British rule also included within it the struggle of a large group of people who not only fought against the British but also fought to be treated more equally. Dalits, women, 
tribals and peasants fought against the inequalities they experienced in their life. Many Dalits organized themselves to gain entry into the temples. So, women demanded that they should have as much as right to education as the men did. Peasants and tribals fought to release themselves from the grasp of the money lender and the high interest which they were being charged. So the students, what do we understand here? We understand that the struggle of the freedom of India was not only from the British rule, but it was also from a freedom of struggle on a large group of people who wanted to be treated equally as the other members of the society gained. So the people such as the Dalit, the women, the tribals and the peasant continuously they fought and they struggled for their equality. Dalits fought from the society to gain the entry into the temples, whereas the women demanded the equal right to education as the men did. On the other hand, the peasants and the tribals, they fought for the equality and fought for the struggle to free themselves from the grasp of the money lenders and the high interest rate which were being charged on their crops, on their agriculture fields by these money lenders. So when India became a nation in 1947, our leaders too were considered about the different kind of inequalities that existed. So these leaders set out a vision and goals in the constitution to ensure that all the people of India were considered equal. This equality of all the person is seen as a key value that unites us all as Indians. Everyone has equal right and opportunities. Untouchability is seen as a crime and has been legally abolished by the law. People are free to choose the kind of work they wish to do. Government jobs are open to all people. In addition, the constitution is also placed responsibility on the government to take specific steps to realize this right to equality for poor and other such marginal communities. So students, from this paragraph, we understand that our constitution make us could realize that there are various kind of inequality that existed in India before independence. So they wanted to make sure that each and every person who is living on the land of India should be given the right to equality. That is why the right to equality is the first fundamental right which is mentioned in our constitution. According to this right to equality, untouchability is now seen as a crime and it is abolished according to law of all the people are and according to the law and all the people are free to use any kind of work and as they wish to do. Government jobs are open up for all. Moreover, it is the responsibility of the government to make sure that the pe poor people and the marginalized community of our society are always given the right to equality. So student, this is how we understand that with the diversity comes discrimination, but it becomes our responsibility to provide equal right to all. So now let us look at few questions with the help of this slide. Question number one, why B.R. Ambedkar, Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar, encouraged Dalits to send their children to school and colleges? Question number two, Mehers are an important social group in the state of? Question number three, tame the constitutional term from, for Dalits? Question number four, what is the meaning of the term Meher? Short question answers. Question number one, list all the things that make people prejudice of others. Question number two, what happens when we act on our prejudice and stereotype? Question number three, what do you mean by equality? Long question answers. Question number one, what do the term difference and prejudice means to you? What is stereotyping? How does it create discrimination? So students, you all are requested to solve these questions with the help of reading of this chapter and with the help of this video. Thank you.